What a win for Tennessee football. What a moment for this program. Snapping a 15-game losing streak to Alabama, Tennessee. Victorious on a 40-yard field goal from Chase McGrath. 52-49 over number three, Alabama. It's your post-game mini pod. I am Mary Kane with Austin Price and Brent Hubbs. Tennessee scores 21 in the first. Scores seven in the second. It was 28-10 to 10 at one point. You knew Alabama wasn't going to stay down for long. It was a back and forth game in the second half. And from a guy who missed a PAT earlier in this football game, comes back and wins it at the horn. The stadium is filled with fans on the on the, the, the crowd rushes the field, all that stuff. The goalposts are somewhere on Cumberland, maybe in the Tennessee River. I don't know. Brent Hubs, it was quite a scene tonight. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's hard to kind of put it in a nutshell exactly what it was. But but for me, the biggest thing is it was it's it was the toughness of Tennessee. It was the mental toughness of Tennessee today. Um, great start. You knew they weren't going to blow them out. Um, just wasn't going to happen. And and Tennessee made mistakes in the second half, but but they didn't they didn't wilt. They they didn't flinch. I mean, Ramel Keaton doesn't run on a deep ball. If he keeps running, that's a touchdown. Uh, on, on that drive in, in the second half, in the third quarter. When that doesn't happen, you think, oh, they've, they've given the opportunity there. Um, they get backed up, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're down, down the field to score. They, they miss the extra point, they come back, they make, two, make a two-point conversion on a terrific play call on the Utah pass to Princeton mm -hmm. fan. Just Two weeks just, in a row. Just Tennessee's, Tennessee's willingness to, and their ability to not wilt Austin when it gets a little thick and gets a little hairy. Uh, they didn't in the Florida game, and they didn't today, and that's what stands out to me about this team and about this win today. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, you go back to, you know, the, they finally elected to let Jimmy Holiday return one, and it was the wrong decision. They should have just called for the fair catch. They get backed up to the five. First yard or first down run, then they have the botch. Dallas Turner picks it up, scoop and score, and it's like, well, you know, here, here comes another thing. At the end of the game, Hendon Hooker throws it up, tipped around, picked off. Here comes Alabama running it back, and everybody in the in the place is going, oh my gosh, this is how it's going to end again, and then flag. And, and a legitimate call. A, a, yeah. yeah, unlike the unlike the one that they called yeah. on Tennessee that they gave, uh, they gave Alabama a first and goal. Yes, that was a bad that was a bad penalty. Go ahead. Sorry. You know, but I mean, like you know, the, the scene was unbelievable. You had walk on William Wright out there. I mean, like I couldn't believe Alabama didn't throw at him. I mean, like I was like, I mean, like, I literally was filming and I'm like, I'm just going to video this because surely they're going to throw at the walk on, and they didn't and. Missed the field goal. I mean, every, you, just, you just felt it. You just like. I mean, like you know, it's kind of like the Florida game. You kind of just uh, hear it, but they're gonna find another way to lose right. to the Gators. And you're like, oh my gosh, they have been in this unbelievable position. Here comes the heartbreak. Here comes the heartbreak. They'll have to wait to smoke cigars another year. Nah, they they miss, and then super aggressive Josh Heupel, Hendon Hooker. Finds, you know, first Ramel Keaton, then Brew McCoy, and then the knuckleball of all knuckleballs, Tim Wakefield is is <laughs> is, 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 is so proud. Um, and guess what? Well, check that. Forget Tim Wakefield. R. A. Dickey. Yeah, he let's keep it the Tennessee. Th let's yeah. keep it the Tennessee thing. R. A. Dickey is so proud. And who cares? If that thing's going to go down forever. I mean, like it's I, the most beautiful, ugly field goal we've seen in a long time. I, you know, I mean, forever. It, it, again, you talk about like moments, like you know, Jalen Hyatt will will live forever with five touchdowns. He is now at ten through six games. That is tied. There was eight guys that got to double digits. He's now the ninth. The record is thirteen, and you have to like his chances because every game counts, that he's going to be able to break Marcus Nash's single-season touchdown record. It's just super impressive. And, again, I, I, you can talk about Jalen Hyatt until you're blue in the face, and, and, and rightfully so. But what Ramel Keaton continues to give this team with Cedric Tillman out oh, yeah. is, is very, very impressive. You know, I mean, it's gonna be know, a shame I, when he goes back I, to playing four snaps a game. He won't. <laughs> we joke, but seriously, I, I, I will say this though: kudos, kudos to you know, uh, 
you know, Princeton Fant. I mean, it, who, if you had him with a rushing touchdown against Alabama on the bingo card, you won it early tonight. From well, the offset eye. Well, and, and hey, again. And he got popped and right. just kept chugging. He did. Again, but, hey, he, he's played them all here. Yeah. He's played linebacker, running back, wide receiver, and now and tight end. And, and again, the guy had some drops early in the year. He had the fumble against Florida. And this is two weeks in a row where he's made tough, some tough catches, made some big plays. You all talked about the Utah pass uh, for the two-point conversion. But they just keep having guys step up. And, you know, it's this, you know, this dream that no ball fan wants to wake up from after 20 years. It, it really did feel like 20 years of pent-up aggression and angst and, and, and every adjective you can throw out just released yeah. when that field goal went through. I mean, it was, I mean, it was just, it, it, the scene was unbelievable. Austin, you kind of did this after the win against LSU, and, and uh, I kind of did this in the two-minute drill, but now with the win over Alabama, which, again, number three is what it said on the television screen tonight, but it was number one in the coaches poll. We all know what Alabama is and Nick Saban and all that. I mean, Tennessee, realistically, is in the conversation now to go to Atlanta. Not only to Atlanta, you control your destiny. I understand that, and you got half the season left to play. But I mean, Tennessee's going to be in the conversation moving forward for a college football playoff berth. I mean, that is yep. that is unreal. Seventeen months in. Well, it, it is, and again, it, it's it's because of it's because of the transfer portal. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Hendon Hooker, mm-hmm. Hendon Hooker's going to New York as a Heisman Trophy finalist. Now he's going to be in New York. I'm not saying he's going to win it, You're going to but, me to go but he's going to be in New York for the Heisman Tro- to be at the Heisman Trophy ceremony. I, I don't think, I don't think there's any doubt at, to me at this point where he's playing. But he would have to fall completely off the yeah. map, and that's well, that's t- not going to happen. Well, he's not going to fall off the map, and Tennessee's going to win enough games to warrant it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean and, unless they just and he should be. I mean, just think about it. The story is Jalen Hyatt, but Hendon Hooker threw five touchdowns against Alabama tonight. Yeah. That's wild. Well, and, and it, it's goes, it shows you how the game has changed. No. So most points Alabama's given up since Swanee in like 04 or something like that. 1907. 07, what excuse a, me. What a stat. They give up 54 <laughs> points yeah. to Suwanee. Suwanee, man. Have you ever been to Suwanee? And that used to be good. Um, <laughs> but, but and again, you, you got, Jalen, you got all those stories. I said this on the two-minute drill, and, and I asked Josh Heupel this. The story of the last two weeks of this football team has been the physicality of the offensive line. Yeah. And I don't want to take anything away from the defensive line because I thought they played physical as well. But if you would have said coming into this game that Tennessee was going to rush for more yards than Alabama, mm-hmm. that they were going to give up one sack, that they were going to give up, what, two negative yards? Two tackles for loss. Two tackles for, for loss. Yeah. If you would have said that coming in, who, who, was, who had that for the bet win, right? Like nobody. I mean, Tennessee's ability in the trenches, particularly on the offensive line, from a pure football standpoint, Eric, mm-hmm. it to me is the story of this football game because I did not see, I didn't think they would be bad, but I didn't see that performance coming at all. Yeah, no doubt, neither did I. Uh, this offensive line again, kind of, kind of playing a couple of different guys at left tackle. You had Gerald Minty in there, a lot of JJ Crawford in the second half. Um, it wasn't perfect at times, but again, the, the stats don't lie. You, you do not give up more than one sack. You give up two TFLs. You run the football so well. You know, with, you take out sacks or negative plays or whatever, I mean, Tennessee ran for 198 yards on Alabama, a team that was surrendering 84 yards on the season. Uh, just, I mean, it, it's, it's... Yeah, incredible. Gerald Mincy early, J.J. Crawford yeah, in the second half. Mincy got banged up, and yeah. so that's why he wasn't in there. But, but here's, here's the, from the visual standpoint, everybody go, well, you know, Hendon Hooker, his legs are a factor and everything. It didn't feel like he was running for his life all night long. No. It did feel like Bryce Young was running for his life. I made the joke but, with but, Austin. But it didn't feel that way, and that's a credit by, to by Glenn the way, Ellerby. Uh, uh, this is all about Tennessee, but dude, Bryce Young is filthy. And, and, and <laughs> his play. ability to keep his eyes yeah. up the field is better than anybody I've ever seen. The, the, the touchdown that he threw to the tight end down here, where you thought he was going to run, but he kept those eyes. I mean, and he did the same thing when he hit the, the, the one guy in here after Tennessee had gotten the sack on him. They, yeah, they, they, he, they, he hit jo- by, Jojo Earl. Yeah, Jojo Earl. Earl Bry- yeah. Bry- Bry- Byron Young, you know, put the pressure and then Big O slung him down, and then he got they got pressure the next play, and there he is as they're draped all over him, just flicks it. I mean, it's a little Mahomes esque. I'm not saying he's Patrick no, Mahomes, but yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of that that you think he's going to run and boink, he, he he side arms one in or does whatever. He, here's where he helped himself tonight. He showed a lot of toughness because he got knocked. 
Yeah. He got planted and he bounced back up. That's something he needed to do. And he was terrific tonight. I don't want to take anything away from his performance. Yeah, he was. He was fantastic. I mean, he threw for over 400 yards. He didn't have over 500 yards of total offense because the joke uh, that I was referencing earlier, he didn't run the football much. I said, well, he ran a lot, <laughs> just not in front of the line of scrimmage. Tennessee, oh, I mean, just you know, slip and slide out there. A lot of those you could have got him down for some big-time plays, but uh, in the end they did just enough. Uh, Chase McGrath misses the PAT, comes back, hits the game winner. Uh, but I want to talk about the sequence before that. That throw to Brew McCoy, and, and McCoy hadn't done anything since snap number one of the in terms of receptions since uh, you know reception number one of the game. What a play! What a reception to set that up for Chase McGrath, and then everything else just kind of went into place. Yeah, I mean, huge game. I mean, it wasn't the 207 for Jalen Hyatt, but his catch was as big as any of them that Jalen Hyatt had. I mean, like they all they all catch. matter. They all big matter. Big boy catch. Big boy yeah. catch. And again, it's a team game. They all matter. Jalen Hyatt's five touchdowns mattered. And the Brew McCoy catch, the Ramel Keaton catch before that. Um, by the way, Hyatt, sixth uh, best game as far as yardage in Tennessee hin- history, only behind Kelly Washington's 256, Denarius Moore's 228, Cordero Patterson's 219, Willie Galt's 217. Um, I forgot about CP, who was here tonight, um, uh, you know, as they honored him out on the field. You know, but I mean, th- that was the sequence. I mean, again, gr- aggressive play calling. Um, you know, when, when Alabama missed it, no one in the, at least no one in the house I was around thought that Tennessee was just going to mail it in. Let's play for yeah. overtime. You, yeah. It was. It was. They had three get, timeouts. They were. It calling. was. It was. Get it to midfield. Check. Next play with nine seconds to go. Let's see if we can get in field goal range. Had that been incomplete, they would have taken the shot to the end zone for the hail mary and and taking the shot. But you know, kudos to Bruce McCoy bringing it down and you know then the rest is history and Chase McGrath will live forever. In Tennessee lore. Yeah, well, and, and along with a lot of other players who, who, who performed extremely well. Um, again, I, I go back to the aggressiveness of this coaching staff and of Josh Heupel and the confidence it exudes in players, Eric. I mean, there was no, you know, there was no doubt they were going. They were going. Yeah. They were going there. I mean, they, they were going to attack there. And and um, Alex Golish. And Josh Heupel, and I don't think Alex Golish gets enough credit, probably because it's, you know, quote, Josh Heupel's on it. They schemed Alabama's secondary. I didn't think Alabama's secondary was great coming into the game. Yeah. I thought they gave up some plays. They were masterful. They, being the coaches, were masterful at getting Jalen Hyatt matched up on the safety. Yeah. And it was it, it was a beatdown when that yeah. happened because that safety could not run with him. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, two of I – mean, he scored five times, but two that come to mind – uh, Jalen Hyde just runs right by him. Yeah, I mean that that's just that's just speed, right? And and, and getting that matchup to where you're going to be splitting the corner and the safety, and knowing you can just run right up the field, uh, you know Jimmy Holiday style a little bit, but it's Jalen Hyatt uh, and score is incredible. I'll, I'll see more of this on film when I go back and watch it, but there were a couple of really good play designs. And then in terms of the, there's no doubt they were going to come back, and uh, you heard it like four or five times in post game press conference, just a wipe and clear mentality, wipe and clear. Chase McGrath said. Hey, I just had to wipe it. That's never happened to me before. Uh, Josh Heupel said he tried to go over there and talk to him after the missed PAT, and he was like, oh, I started to, then I stopped because he kind of gave me a look like I got it, I got it. Um, and that's just resiliency. You know, this team a couple years ago would have just quit. There's no quit in this football team. And uh, the, the scoop and score, you know, right there at the end, you know, a lot of people say it was over at that point, but not Tennessee. They come back and obviously won this football game. Yep, and, and you know, <laughs> had Tennessee lost, I'd be sitting here on this podcast saying, man, you just wish you could get back up on the horse next week and you didn't have to play UD Martin. Hey, UD Martin comes at a great time. Tennessee secondary. Again, I've talked about these buffer games. Yeah. These buffer That's games right. are, are nice because Tennessee all of a sudden can get some people healthy. You know, you had a bunch of guys dropping out of the secondary. I can't believe they were playing a walk on there at the end of the game. I mean, that was wild. Christian, Christian Charles goes down there towards the end. It, it, uh, he was in a whole lot of pain. Of course, Kamal Haddon. Um, but I mean, you really can rest. I mean, like, I mean, the walk-on can play next week. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they can be UD Martin with, with, you know. Well, and, and hey, let's, let's give it. They, they weren't perfect, all right. They gave up a ton of yards, but Danico Slaughter had a couple of sticks. He, he did, did did not look. He looked like he belonged. He did not look out of place. And that's he, a guy that's been. He in made a bunch system. of misses, but yeah. he did not look like he was out of place. And that's a guy that's been in a college system. It not the same system, but he's been a college football player for three years. It's a guy that came in in day one 
he got a start at South Carolina back in 2020. I hadn't seen the film much since, but he did. Um, I just felt like the moment wasn't too big for him. It helps when you look over and you have a guy like Trayvon Flowers that's kind of there as a, a comfort feeling, kind of allowing you to do what you do and kind of give you a hand when you need it. But yeah, wasn't great. There was a lot that we're going to talk about you know, moving forward in terms of watching the tape. But for Tennessee to go out and win this game with a help, he might not be healthy, but damn, he was good, Bryce Young. <laughs> To go out there and beat Bryce Young without Jalen McCullough, without Kamal Haddon, um, a win's a win, but even when you factor in that, it's even more impressive. But yeah, I mean, 52 points against Alabama, as you pointed out the stat earlier about Sawani, but 52 points, no Cedric Tillman. If I mean, you like, said that in August, people told you you're crazy. crazy. You're crazy. Right? If yep. you just said, hey, you're going to score 52 against Alabama, but Cedric Tillman's not going to play in the game. And it's a credit to the scheme, but also, as you pointed out earlier this week on the podcast, you know, Jalen Hyde played the scheme last year. He didn't do that. He didn't do what he did tonight last year at all. So uh, Certainly. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, again, the scene, spectacular. Uh, Josh, I talked about this. Uh, was it the two minutes? It's one of them. We've taped so many different things tonight. Um, Josh Heupel, you know, he talked about this, and he's right. The the vol walk, I, you know, my kid was here, my nine-year-old, not my seven-year-old, but my nine-year-old was here. Um, she's never watched Tennessee lose in any sport. She, every game she gets to go to is normally a game that's, you know, <laughs> they're set up to win. Um, and I told her going in, I said, you know, hey, you, you, you're probably, you know, you, you know, Tennessee may win, but they may lose. And she said, what do they ever tie? You know, she's asking questions. <laughs> Only 93 last time. Only time-time. in the NFL. <laughs> um, and uh, well, I took her over to the ball walk, you know, get to be a dad for a minute. And I've kind of been at the ball walks this year, like just to kind of see them because I come here early, I hang out with the tailgates and stuff. And um, I like to just kind of see what it's like. And I praised the Akron ball walk. It was good. But I was like, you know, next week's going to be way better. And it was double. And tonight was double Florida. It was crazy. Like, I, she's like, can I get on your shoulders? I was like, Addison, you can get on my shoulders. You still are not going to see anything. <laughs> Like, it was insane. Like, I mean, the people that lined up over there, was, it was just, it was, you know, it's like, you know, it's like lined up for, like, the Macy's parade or something. I mean, like, how, how long, they, how early they got yeah. there. I mean, it was, it was wild. Um, but, like, just the whole scene, everything about this game, the orange out, I thought was really, really good. I wasn't sure um, because, you know, you're like, well, most of the time, I don't think we're in orange anyways, but there's enough smattering of blacks, grays, whites that – you know, but when everybody was in orange, it was really, really well done. Um, you know, the post game obviously was ridiculous. Um, it took, you know, took a while to get off that field, didn't it? <laughs> I will say they, they got the goalpost down, I think, quicker in 98. No question. Um, no question. I was in there filming faster. for like two minutes. And I'm like, all right, stop yeah. the lead. Yeah. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sure they were going to get the goalpost down today. Um, but. Um, you know, they took chunks of the turf. Like they'll, Again, they've got plenty of sod. They'll come in here, and you'll never notice it next week because it'll be painted over, but chunks of the end zone turf. Um, you know, somebody's going to go put that in their yard, and, and, you know, it'll start sprouting out and, you know, growing. Um, I saw but, that. I just smiled. I was like, good on whoever did that. You know, but again, I mean, I, it just works out well. I think Tennessee's got the bye week next week, or, well, basically the bye week next week against UT Martin. No offense to Jason Simpson, <laughs> but they don't have a chance. Um, you know, it, then they have Kentucky, a Kentucky team that's playing decent tonight against Mississippi State, you know, with Will Levis, but they're still not an offensive juggernaut. Tennessee keeps playing the way they're playing. The only team that can beat them is Georgia, unless they beat themselves. So, with that being said, Brent, I'll ask you first, you know, be in the moment, but don't overreact and everything. I mean, are all bets off? I mean, yes. Tennessee just beat Alabama. Tennessee can beat Georgia. Tennessee can go to the SEC championship. If you can beat Alabama, you can win whoever you're going to see it. Probably Alabama again. I mean, are all bets off right now? If they stay healthy yeah. and, and they and they and they continue to handle success the way they've handled success. Here's the thing about this team: if you're talking that that type of pitcher, yeah. this is a better football team than they were against Florida. Mm-hmm. This this football team's gotten better since they beat Florida. They really have. I mean, right. I, they're better in the offensive line. Oh yeah, the run game is is fine in itself. The tight ends are playing better. The, the, um, they're, the, the, they're they're a better they're a better football team now. When they blitz and they don't get home, they got a huge problem stopping in the middle of the football field. I yeah. don't know what the answer to that's going to be moving forward because when Alabama p- p- picked up the blitz, there was the middle of the field. I mean, Jameer Gibbs dropped a ball that would have probably been a touchdown, yeah. 
that, that it didn't happen. He, he didn't make the play. But the middle of the field is something they have to address when they blitz and can't get home. But to your point, to your question, yeah. Yeah. If they continue to grow and stay healthy, I don't. I mean, it's hard to say this team can't do anything right now. Like it doesn't mean that they're the best team in the country. It doesn't mean that they, on paper, are better than Georgia or Alabama. But they can beat those teams because you just beat one tonight. Um, all bets are off. Yeah, I mean, you know, if they played ten times, I mean, you know, I, mean, I don't know. But I mean, like, the point is that you don't play ten times. Yep. You may play them twice. You may get to Alabama twice if you can beat Georgia. Um, but I mean. I mean, what a scene that would be. I mean, Hendon was very vocal at the end of the game. Last question, what's your goal? Atlanta. And, 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 and you know, again, it's about embracing it, welcoming it, and, and, you know, going out there and trying to achieve it. You know, Tennessee just continues to uh, achieve everything they're trying to achieve. It's been fun. Tonight was a whole lot of fun this week. was a whole lot of fun, and uh, we're going to have a whole lot of fun breaking up this sucker down. <clears throat> Excuse me, 52 to 49 Tennessee wins a walk off 40 yard field goal off the right foot of Chase McGrath. Tennessee snaps a 15 game losing streak to arch rival Alabama in the 105th playing of the third Saturday in October. Plenty of post game coverage coming your way, plenty of recruiting coverage over the next couple of days. And don't forget the Rocky Top Rewind coming up tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Uh, but again, for the final time for Neyland Stadium here on this October the 15th night, Tennessee 52, Alabama 49. This has been your Vol Quest postgame mini pod.